Howdy folks, I'm Brian. I'm Amber. And here's some Reddit. Our first story is titled, Am I a jerk for keeping my son's name chosen while I was pregnant after my sister-in-law used it for her son five weeks earlier? So I had my son a month ago. We had his name chosen early in my pregnancy. It's a double honor name, which kind of came from a unique place. We had two people we wanted to honor. We didn't go with direct names, but names that were tied to the people, and we happened to truly love the names. We announced their gender and name in a Facebook post in April with a blanket that had his name embroidered on it. Fast forward a week, and my sister-in-law, my husband's sister, for clarity, who nobody knew was expecting, announces that she has given birth to a son, and the name she has chosen? The very name that we chose. It was awkward. My in-laws all asked what she was thinking. She said she got to give birth first and loved the name, so what was the big deal? My husband thought she was nuts and told her that she was a jerk for thinking that she had claim to the name now. She said it wasn't her fault that she got there first. I was like, it's fine, we are not changing the name, and cousins can share this name. Well, she's mad that this actually happened. She texted my husband about two days after our son was born, asking him what our son's name is, and he told her she knew. We had announced it. Cue her texting every member of the family saying how awful we were to the kids and how we were petty and nasty and how I was a jerk for stealing the name after she had used it. Father-in-law told us to ignore her that it will settle down, but she's still mad and says we're only hurting the kids with this. She has specifically called me a jerk because I was the one who said we would just keep the name as planned despite her using it. She said, I am a jerk to her and our boys. Am I a jerk? All right, Opie. No, um, you're not a jerk in this situation. You know, I th- I have a theory on this one. My theory is that she chose this name because you already had a bunch of baby stuff probably picked out. Um, and you already had, you know, the showers and all these kinds of things because generally people who pick out names ahead of time will have you know customized things for their child already so i would imagine that part of the reason why she took this name is maybe in hopes that she could score some free stuff from your child uh and be able to be like oh well now that your son isn't that name maybe you should uh give that stuff to me so that's kind of my theory I think that this is probably the case here. She's not mad that you took took the name. She's mad that she's not going to get her free stuff. I don't know. That would be my guess. Maybe it's just that she really loved the name and she was not uh, expecting you to put up a fight for it. I really don't know. But in any case, the people that you have honored with this name are now doubly honored. So what could be better? Anyhow, take care and uh, good luck. She's delusional, not the jerk. The fact that you stuck to your gun showed her that she had ill attentions by picking the name. She was playing chicken and obviously hoped that she would choose something different. Now she's mad that you didn't. Sister-in-law, you are trying to kidnap what I've rightfully stolen. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Also, my half of my husband's family, including my husband, is named John, and it doesn't bother him. The worst consequence is he keeps getting mail from AARP even though he isn't 40 yet. Alright, our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for not letting my sister make my son's birthday cake? My sister is an aspiring professional baker. She set up a Facebook business for it in 2018 and so far has not been able to build much of a client customer base. Part of the reason for this is she isn't the best decorator out there and sometimes she's downright bad. Before setting up back in 2017, she did a taste and feedback test with the family. She told us she wanted to know if where she needed to improve and all that stuff. Cool. 
a couple of people told her that she was great and that she should open her own business because she'd be great. The rest of us, me, my dad, my older brother, youngest sister, and my husband all mentioned how she needed to lay off on the sugar a little bit because, holy cow, she was poisoning those cakes. And we also mentioned that she would need to refine her skills with decorating. She asked for specifics and we gave them, especially on the kids' designs because they were downright terrifying for kids. Tested on some of our kids. She didn't take it on board though, except for the sugar. She told us at the time that we had overreacted to the designs and we would see. Don't you just love those kinds of people who are like, oh, please give me feedback. And then you give them feedback and they're like, oh no, I didn't want that feedback. (laughs) My sister has five reviews on her profile. Three of them are one star with the same feedback we gave about the appearance of the cakes. One woman had her two-year-old cry when she saw the cake and another had her five-year-old say they were scared of it. The other one was more angry about it and did not hold back. The other two were three-star reviews that say they could have been a lot better. It frustrates my sister. She tries to grow, but she doesn't listen to feedback. My son is turning eight this year, and it will be his first friend party due to circumstances. My sister asked if she could do the cake. I told her that we had already ordered one, which is true. She was hurt that I wouldn't go to her over another baker. She offered to cover the cancellation fee, and I turned her down. Then she got mad. She said, how can she build her business if her family won't even help her out and give her practice and a portfolio to build? I told her that she should start listening to the feedback that she's received instead of pressuring family to become guinea pigs for her invitations. I also suggested that practice without getting an order because it means that she can provide a better quality product without using people's monies and celebrations to do it. She told me that a good, not a jerk, sister would give her the experience and that it would mean so much more to my son to have a cake made by his loving aunt than some random baker. She has me feeling a bit bad despite her telling me that I'm a jerk if I don't. I can see that she's genuinely hurt that we don't like her cakes enough to give her this. Am I the jerk? All right, OP. This is a tricky situation. I mean, I think that your sister's feelings are something to consider here. And I think that you um, sincerely want to have a good birthday party and not have a horrifying mess of a cake. Now, the cakes taste fine, it sounds like. And it sounds like that you want a cake that is well decorated and will is also, you know, good to eat. Your sister has done a good job at, you know, the baking part, and it seems like that she's doing well at that. It seems like she's really struggling at this decorating part. It could be that maybe she can find someone to team up with who is able to decorate better than she can. Um, I think that this is difficult because, of course, you want to give her a chance but she won't listen to your feedback and you've already told her that she needs to work on her decorating skills. And I don't think that you're wrong here when you say that she needs to practice on her own. You know, this is a big part of like any skill is practice. If she's only practicing when she gets an order, then she's never going to be good at decorating. That's just the reality of it. She needs to work on this skill in order to grow and become better. And she knows where her weak points are. I mean, she's been given feedback by her family. She's been given feedback by her cu- customers. And so she she's aware. And I think that what she's probably hurt by is that you won't give her a chance to make a cake for her. You know, if she's... This, um, I guess, intent upon it, cake decorations don't have to be necessarily super fancy. And a lot of them you can also buy like, you know, the cake toppers and the, you know, icing roses and stuff like that separately. So maybe in the future, you know, you can ask her to, you know, make you guys a cake 
and um, you know have her decorate it with more simple things. That way, she can start to build a you know portfolio around simpler things, and then she can go into more complicated things. You know, she's way outside of her depth if she's not able to actually do simple cakes well. And you know, these you know other cakes are you know of course looking like a disaster so yeah i mean i think that you aren't probably a jerk here um though i mean it might be nice to give your sister a chance even if her cakes aren't necessarily the best so i can certainly understand why you win it though um but yeah anyhow take care and uh good luck not the jerk your sister does not have a business, she has a Facebook pipe dream. After four years, she needs to face the reality that she is not capable of baking for profit. And OP replies, I think that's where my frustration stems. She could make a profitable business and side business if she were to put in the work to grow and improve her weak areas. Decorating. It has never felt like she's put that work in. She expects to grow... And she works, but people don't want to pay for that. Yeah, people, if you're, if someone's paying for a cake, then they're going to expect a good quality product at the end. They're not going to expect a disaster-looking cake. Or you certainly don't grow your skills from paying customers. Make stuff as practice, give it away, or sell it at a discount until you get a better handle on what you're doing. Yeah, all right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, consider giving me a like. If you didn't, consider giving me a dislike. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow.